Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wayne Gaming. It's something about sort of the gaming drag today. I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Lust Shards, Tate's Path. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right back in. I'll save the Patreon stuff for the end of the video. Anyway, Alarm Chain, you were up, and let's go. Alrighty. <clears throat> the cat brought some sleep poison antidotes, made by Oliver, just in case. Soon, yet another genius idea hits us, to fly on the broom just above the ground so our steps don't make noise. That was something we should have done from the start, one might say. But we're both stupid. So cut two idiots some slack. Is this the... Yeah, this is it. Okay. The more we advance, the more stress we get. It is quiet. It is quiet. Too quiet. There is nothing around here. Yeah, no mammals, no birds, no night falling. Keep your eyes open. Oh, really? I was thinking about taking a nap right about here and now. Don't get an attitude with me. Shh. Look. Finally, between the trees, a man-made structure rises. Two of them, actually. It's something resembling a totem, or perhaps a weird road sign. Animal skulls on wooden pillars surrounded by feathers and cloth guard what looks like a naturally made path further, further into the dark forest. Like gargoyles staring at us with dark, empty eyes. That is as good a sign as any that we need to get out that we're on the right path. I studied the skulls a bit closer to make sure they once belonged to wild animals and not people. A sigh of relief escapes my mouth as the biology matches the one of the typical forest deer and the other one a stag. This explains the lack of wildlife in the area. We change our course and start walking or levitating on the new path we found. More signs, such as temporary leather tents in the trees, made for scouting, appear on our way. But no living beings so far. At least no more skulls in sight. At last, a large fence made of regular-sized logs, obtained either from, a far, from far away or from ba baby giant trees, comes into view above which the tops of multiple huts can be seen. The perimeter is unguarded, but the hubbub behind the fence makes it clear that clear there are people here. We fly low around the fence until we find a big enough crack to see what's going on. Inside, we are met with a very large clearing surrounded by those huts, in different sizes, colors, and materials, mostly consisting of wood and leather. Some of them are on the ground, others suspended in trees. People. No. Night fallen. Wild furs, to be more specific, are walking around, living their daily lives. Some are descaling and cleaning fish, preparing them to be made a meal out of in a nearby pot. Others are washing pieces of cloth, which I assume are supposed to be clothes in a narrow creek that rushes through the part of the camp. Clothes might be an overstatement, since they're all mostly naked, wearing the bare minimum with, at the exception of two or three individuals. No matter how lively, busy, or interesting the image is, the cat's eyes are fixed on one thing and one thing alone. A large pillar in the middle of it all, surrounded by flower offerings. Soft bedding lies at the foot of it, ele elevated from the ground, with a makeshift tent of leaves and sticks on top, inside which a small indigo snout can be seen. Seraph. Second hill, water time. Hey guys and gals, alright, let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Alarm chain, you were up, and let's go. Had to go take a little water break, anyway. Alright, there he is! We whisper. Why don't you just teleport there and get him? This is our chance! Are you out of your mind? Don't you remember the pool of blood he created because those dumbasses woke him up? Ah, yeah, that would be bad. Besides, I don't want to waste any of my magic before the battles. Are you serious? That's your... that's your second excuse? Yes, I'm serious. Look at him, he's completely fine over there. I told you I'm not going to sabotage our life at the Academy for my sake. Plus, we need a plan. We can't just bring him back to the same place, they're just going to come back. And since he's still a nightfall and he can't get inside the barrier. Yeah. What do you propose? There's only one answer for now. I say we... Hello there. Our eyes widen immediately and remain unmoving. A deep but smooth voice makes its appearance right next to our ears, followed by the, at the same moment by a cold, hard, and thin object pressed against my throat. I dare not speak or move, but my people has to turn towards my friend. He has the same reaction as me, but his surprise turns quickly to anger and annoyance. He was pretty sneaky. Impressive ambush. You can make yourself useful and protect us. A barrier for our necks would be nice in case he tries anything. Sure, let a demon of destruction, lust, and chaos use protection magic. I can kill him before he can react if you want. No, just make sure we won't die. Fine, your death would, be, would definitely be an inconvenience to me. Because he's touching us both, there's no way we can teleport away and be safe at the same time. A spotted snout gets closer from in between our heads, making it easier to see with the side outside of my eye. I apologize for the rude welcome. Just wanted to make sure not to startle you, so you don't immediately blink away. I'd say you startled us more this way than with a regular greeting. But it worked, right? You're still here. 
It's not like we have a choice. That is true, but I do. And now that both your lives are in my hands and I can end them at any moment, very welcoming indeed. Will you promise not to run away when I let go? It should be proof enough that we don't want to bring you any harm since there won't be any better opportunity than this to do so. Yeah, yeah, we get it. The cat lets go of my hand with a little resistance on my part. Thank you very much. The knives are removed, together with a small pur fur patch cleanly cut by the blades. The man takes a few steps back as we both turn to face him. Oh, well, hello there. My friend beside me is still clinging to, this, to his sour expression. He clearly didn't like being taken by surprise. I once again apologize for my threat. I hope you can find it in your hearts to forgive me. He bows to us deeply. To be fair, although my heart was racing when he first appeared, it's true that I don't feel even a tiny bit threatened. Since what's deadlier around here than having a knife pressed against your neck? <laughs> Not to mention he, was, he has a very calm, polite, and even joyful attitude. Ignoring his well-defined muscles and size, I feel safe around him. I don't think so. Don't antagonize him, please. That's a shame to hear. He looks genuinely sad. I forgive you. My response was automatic, but at least it made him light, made him a little uh, light up a little. Can't say the same about the cat's needle-like stare directed towards me. Second now, water time. Hmm. I know why you're here. You do? Then you know we have problems to solve here. He nods. You must be the one that found Kavithai. Kavathi. That kill kill what? The dragon. So he is a dragon. Uh, too loud. Why, of course. What else could he be? He bows again. We are very thankful for the care you provided in your collaboration. You literally stole him from me. You kidnapped him. Why? Kavathi is very important for our tribe, you see. We worship the dragons. Anything other than complete luxury is a sin. We want to provide that for him. I'm glad you had the same instincts of protecting him despite your friend's denial of his nature. He glances at me. After all, it's in our blood, brother. Brother? Oh no, I'm not falling for this one again. We're here to take my friend home, and that's what we'll do. He appears panicked. Please understand that we cannot allow you to do that. The next time our parties go searching for him, I won't be able to convince them not to be violent. Why couldn't you just try to negotiate? Do you believe that would have worked? No. We have been expecting your arrival, so we can explain the situation better. We do not wish to be enemies, but we do want Kavathi to be safe and fulfill his destiny. What destiny? If you wish, we can talk more inside. My father, our chief, would be happy to see you, to see you, both of you. Is it safe to just walk in? Yes, after all, we made sure our guards and scouts know about you. Otherwise, you would have gotten an arrow in the knees and dragged into the camp by force for questioning long ago. Not a fan of that imagery. Lead the way, then. Wait, we're actually going in? He proved a point. We're not in any danger here. <laughs> and I want to see my friend closer. Wonderful. Follow me, then. He walks along the fence, looking back and waiting for us with a smile and nods of encouragement. We look at each other and follow. I realize I didn't introduce myself yet. My name is Ragnar, future chief of the Nightgale tribe. You can also call me by my adventurer's name, Bob. Totally different sounding names. Why two of them? And why Bob? Names are precious to us. They are given only after finding our calling or individuality within our tribe. Since I was away from my tribe before I got my name, I had to use a replacement. Your kind doesn't take why I haven't deserved my name yet as a serious answer, so a very nice gentleman picked this one for me. So what about you two? Uh, my name is Travis. Pleased to meet you, Travis. And you, the one with the persistent frown. Let me guess. Ethan? What makes you guess that? As far as the history of your kind goes, that is a name that is associated with fury, and I thought your continuous anger might be part of you enough to get that to get you that name. We don't choose names based on personality traits. Maybe I appear angry because I'm being guided by my friend's kidnapper towards the entrance of the camp full of my friend's kidnappers. Did you consider that your naming philosophy? I have not. I'm sorry, may I ask your real name in that case? I'd rather keep that one to myself for now. I understand you must value names as much as we do. I guess. Why Bob, though? Here we are. Two people are nightfall and stand atop two low towers on either side of the main gate and give a signal for it to open as soon as they spot Ragnar. <laughs> Ooh, pretty village. As we step inside, I notice that this whole part of the camp is very welcoming-looking. 
The tall fence is only visible behind me, and the rest is obscured either by trees, huts, or is simply too far away to see, giving the whole place a very open vibe. Additionally, the other nightfall in here either pay us no mind, as if they knew we'll come by, or even approach us happily. Oh, hello there. Hmm. They exchange some words with Ragnar before extending their hands for a shake, which we both accept out of politeness. Although handshakes are not the only way they greet, apparently. Hey! Get your paw off my ass, you perf! No, stop! Bob, tell your child stealing weirdos to get away! Zenvok! Helgulda! Ah, Tula, Megima. Forgive us. I thought I told them to keep your usual traditions out of your way, but some didn't get the memo. He squints his eyes at the handsy nightfall, which moves back, chuckling awkwardly. Yeah, okay, can I see my friend now? Givathi is right this way. Not much guidance is needed since the flowery pillar was always in sight. We just want to keep close to Ragnar. For safety reasons at first, but now I'm just enjoying the view. Never knew how mesmerizing spots can be, and those hip and shoulder movements paired with the tail swings, contoured muscles, and big smile? I should try to snap out of it before I drool. To be fair, I am in a camp full of sexy monsters that resemble people the most out of any species of nightfallen out there, so can you blame my lust? Here he is. Oh, don't get too close now. Waking up would be a big mistake. Yes, I know. I'm like the smartass you sent to get him yesterday. If it makes you feel better, he lost two fingers in the process. It does, just a little bit. He gets about ten feet away from the little tent where the wyvern or dragon is sleeping, then sits down crisscrossed, watching attentively, not making a sound or movement. I think he'll be at it for a while. Can you blame him? He gestures for me to follow him, a little way off, and I do just that. I presume so, so we just I presume it's so we just don't have to talk about it right in front of his right in his ear's reach. I do feel bad about our approach, I really do. But it's one of the things I just had to agree with about with my father about. That your town's people like nightfall and even less than the towns I've been in. So we couldn't just knock on your door and ask for our deity back. How did it end up randomly in the woods, anyway? Beats me. The egg was never in our possession, so I can't tell. My father had a premonition about him, so he sent in scouts to retrieve him. What kind of destiny were you talking about earlier? It is said that each tribe of the night will be led someday by a powerful dragon that will make our lives easier and help us defeat an enemy threatening us. At least that's what the chief says. He's been obsessed with the idea of protecting the tribe through whatever means necessary. You do know that dragons went extinct long ago, right? Isn't your kind worshipping hundreds of different deities you've never seen before and have no proof they ever existed? Yes. I suppose at least dragons did exist once. Exactly, so when there is a chance that the child of a god has been born, you can't take any risks. I doubt my friend will see it the same way. But do you? I... I think so. I'm glad you're reasonable. Soon the cat joins us with a new smile on his face, rivaling the one Ragnar has. All right, I'm done. Done with what? Assessing the situation. Kavathia or whatever looks fine. He's well fed, breathes normally, and doesn't seem to have any injuries. Does that mean... Yes, I give you permission to take care of him under one condition. Anything. I get to visit him whenever I want. Of course. Does that mean we're celebrating? Absolutely, we're holding a big feast today, and you two have to be our guests of honor. Ah, I just knew you had to see it the right. I just knew you had to see it the right way. After all, we're like kin, perhaps closer. Well, what does that mean? Of course, I forgot I'm the only one in our tribe you ever spoke to. You with the hidden name. You do not have parents, correct? I. What? Why do you ask? And why do you want? Why do you know that? In that case, let me present myself again. I am Ragnar, son of the Nightgale's tribe's chief, and your older stepbrother. Nice to meet you. Okay, I am going to pause it right there. That seems like a good enough spot to uh, pick it up in the next video. Oh boy. All right. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely Bronze Tier patrons. Thank you all for I do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our Silver Tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Anyway, if you all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our nuts, for more contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye